So we're now going to have a little look at our um, slip pocket inside. We've, we've now completed the outside of our bag. I'm just going to give this a bit of a press because it looks like I've not pressed them as well as I should do. Um, and we're going to make our slip pocket. So I have my two slip pocket panels and you can see they're rectangle, so they're longer on the top than they are on the height. So I'm turning over my panel, my first panel, and on the wrong side, I'm going to make a mark that is three quarters of an inch away from one of those short edges, one of those short sides. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other panel. So three quarters of an inch. Now, this is a different technique for, for making a slip pocket. Um, and I call this the Ellen technique because this is something that um, a lovely bag making friend of mine in Australia showed me a long time ago. Um, so I've always referred to it as the Ellen technique because it wasn't something I came up with. It was something that Ellen came up with. So having made your three quarter inch line, fold your fabric over so that it's wrong sides together and that the raw edge touches that three quarter inch line, which will give you three eighths of an inch hem on the side of your pocket. Press it down. And do exactly the same on the second piece. If you're using directional fabric, what you need to make sure is that you doing your um, fold on the same side for both pieces. Obviously, you need your your design to be going sort of from bottom to top of your pocket so you'll need to figure out which way if you're going to have your hems on the right hand side you need your design to be going from top to bottom on both the lining and um, the exterior so I've now made my three eighths of an inch inch hem on both of my uh, pocket panels I'm going to lay my pocket panels right sides together matching up the corners making sure that those folded corners sit exactly together. I'm going to match up all of those corners. I'm not going to put any more clips than that. You can put more in if you feel you want to. And I'm going to stitch from this corner where my um, folded seam is. I'm going to go all the way down across and then back up again. I'm not going to uh, stitch across that folded um, seam. And I'm going to stitch all the way around using a quarter inch seam allowance. So back stitching, just a couple of stitches at the beginning to secure my stitching. Pivot. I sound like a ballet dancer, don't I? Anything less like a ballet dancer than me, you wouldn't ever wish to meet, to be honest. Oh, I appear to have run out of uh, bobbin thread. See, happens to me too. Sailing away, stitching without any care in the world. So let me just refill a bobbin. I noticed before I got right to the end because that does happen sometimes very annoying big noise because the machine's hand in the bottom bobbin case because it gets a bit of fluff in there. And then re-thread the machine. Ok, 
please note my foot is up when I'm threading my machine. I see a lot of people um, threading their machines with the foot down. You'll never get your thread through your tension discs if your foot is down um, and you'll get dig diggy stitching. So always make sure that your foot is up when you thread your machine so that the thread goes right the way through your tension discs properly. Um, just a little snippet of information. Now we've got, I've got some threads there where that's where that's uh, run out of bobbin threads. So I'm going to go back approximately an inch and I'm going to stitch over the top of my stitching, but I'm just literally doing a back stitch there um, to secure this next line of stitching. And where that stitching is just finishing, I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches there that will just secure where, where my previous stitching stopped. As I come up to this second hem, I'm just going to use my awl um, to hold that hem down so that I know that when I, my foot goes over it doesn't catch. Sometimes the hem that's underneath will catch on the feed dogs if you go really quickly, so do be careful. Just raise your foot up if you need to, if you catch on the bottom of your foot, because you want those hems to stay folded under. A couple of back stitches to secure, and we're good to go. Let's just get rid of all those threads where we have that slight hiccup. You notice I don't, um, I could have cropped that out of the video, I don't do that. It's real, this is real sewing. I run out of thread too, same as everybody else. Um, you know, it happens. So let's trim off the corners of the pocket at 45 degrees, being careful not to trim into my stitching. Once I've trimmed off the corners, I'm then going to take a little bit more from either side of those corners just to get rid of the bulk. Um, I truly believe that we don't, or many of us don't take as much care of the inside of our bags as we do of the outside. Um, and as a bag user, which is the bit that we as bag users see most of, we see most of the inside because we tend to be looking down into our bags. I want it to look pretty. So I'm going to trim off the excess from those folded corners as well. And you can see I don't do that at 45 degrees, I cut quite a lot off, um, sort of a long thin triangle just to get rid of the bulk. Then I'm going to turn my pocket through the right way. I don't know where my pokey tool has gone so I'm going to have to use something else. This is my other favourite pokey tool, it's a screwdriver. Um, not quite what you'd really use, but you know. The trouble with having two tables is that I tend to take stuff over to the other table and then I don't bring it back. What I could do with is having two of everything, but then I, I just, I'd either run out of money or I'd run out of room to store it all. Um, probably the first, because when you start to gather a collection of things for bag making, you realise that you actually have an awful lot and it's actually quite expensive. So, there we go, our pocket is now turned out, and what I'm going to do, put the thread on there, is I'm just going to roll those seams to make sure that the, the seam is sitting right on the edge of the pocket, and then press. I'm going to do the same with all of those side seams. I just wet my finger and just kind of roll between my thumb and forefinger to ensure that the seam is sitting right on the side. That's how you know you're going to get a nice um, rectangular pocket and not one that's got a curve or strange shape to it. seems like a lot of work for a slip pocket. But if you spent all this time making the exterior of your bag, do you want the rest of it to look good too? Okay, so now we've got all of our sides are lovely and square. I'm going to press 
both sides because I want the lining to sit nice and flat as well. And there we have our slip pocket. We still have that open side, but when we attach our slip pocket, that open side will be stitched over. Now, I'm now going to do a line of top stitching along the top edge of my pocket, and that can be whichever edge suits you best. Um, obviously, if you're using directional fabric, you want the design to go from bottom to top. So, that's one line of top stitching. And I'm going to do a second line because I like to do two lines. Let's get rid of any oh, white threads, red fabric, big disaster. Or cream threads actually not white but nonetheless they cling to it terrible things so there's our slip pocket completed now you will need one of your lining panels now you'll have two panels they're exactly the same size um, we're going to work with one of them at the moment and we're going to fit our slip pocket now we're going to draw a line across the, or make a mark across the lining panel that is two and a half inches from the top straight edge. I haven't done a full line because I don't need to. I'm going to fold my lining panel in half and just finger press in the, in the centre, which will show me the centre mark. I'm going to fold my pocket in half so that I get a little fold where the centre is and I'm just going to lay my pocket onto my lining fabric. So it's now sitting two and a half inches away from the top straight edge. Now you can pin, put a couple of pins through there if you want to. I rarely do. Um, and you're now going to stitch down the side along the bottom and up that open side. Now your open side could be on the left or the right. It's not a, not a major issue. Um, if you folded, if you it depends on how your fabric was, your folded end will be on one or the other of the sides. So I'm just back stitching a couple of stitches, and I'm going to stitch around my pocket. a one eighth of an inch seam allowance. Or thereabouts. This isn't a massive pocket. Um, if you wanted to make a wider one, you could do. It wouldn't be a big drama. Um, just by increasing the, the width of the panels that you use. It's very much up to you. to get rid of my chalk marks. Now pockets are an area that get quite a lot of wear and tear and there are a couple of real stress points on a pocket and that's those top corners. So to avoid too many issues where people put, it, this happens a lot, people put a lot of stuff in a pocket and they start to tear away at that corner point. It will actually tear the the lining fabric if the bag you've made is, is really good and solid on the outside there's nothing more upsetting than when you realize that your lining has failed so to avoid that happening I just like to put a 
a small line of stitching and I'll hold this up to show you because it's difficult to see from the video. Let's get rid of my thread ends though. At 45 degrees to the corner. Um, and that will, will spread the load of anything that's being pushed into that pocket, in any weight that's being put on the pocket, it will reduce the stress on that corner. Um, and I do that on both corners. Um, anybody that's thinking, oh, that looks familiar, I wonder where I've seen that before, just have a little look at your jeans pockets because that's what happens on jeans pockets. And why? Because well, jeans were initially worn by men um, rather than women. And they put their hands in their pockets constantly, which just rips the denim from the pocket. So this is a technique that's used in, in making jeans and trousers and such like, uh, but it works really well in a handbag. So you just do these little extra bits of stitching on each corner just to reduce the stress on your um, lining panel. So that's my slip pocket completed um, and I'll come back and show you our zipper pocket.